So, hello. Today we will look at hypokalemia and we will check uh, the symptoms of hypokalemia. So, what, what is it really causing in, in patients? First of all, we need to define what hypokalemia is. Hypo means low of something. Then we have cal standing for potassium and then we have emia standing for blood. So, we have a low amount of potassium in the blood. And usually we have a level of 3.5 to 5.5 millimole per liter. That is the normal level in the blood, depending on the lab. And when we have less than 3 or less than 2.5, then it's very severe. Then we have very severe symptoms. And usually symptoms appear when we have lower than 3. And usually they disappear when we when we increase the level. So when we give medications to this patient, then we will have a disappearance of symptoms. And which are the three main groups of symptoms that we need to remember? We have muscle weakness, we have heart problems, and we have kidney problems. These three, muscle, heart, and kidney problems. If we take muscle weakness, we can have skeletal muscle problems, meaning that you cannot move your uh, arms so good anymore because you're weaker, and usually it affects first the lower leg, so your foot, then it moves up to the trunk, and then it affects your upper arm. So in this in this order, and it can lead all the way to the, para all, all the, way to the paralysis which is very, which would mean you cannot move any any leg or any arm anymore and that's the most severe case so hypokalemia should be taken very seriously and this was only skeletal muscle problem because muscle weakness is not only causing skeletal problem it's also causing respiratory muscle problem which means that muscle is weak in the respiratory which means that you cannot breathe so good anymore which can lead to respiratory failure and death Okay, and also the stomach, the gastrointestinal, the colon, all the gastrointestinal muscles are also weaker or, or can also become weaker, which means that you, you will get something called ileus. Ileus is when the bowels are not propelling the food forward. So that's ileus. It's like an obstruction. And that's very dangerous because you can uh, get the food then up in the opposite direction and then aspirate it into the lungs. So it's very dangerous to get ileus. Please uh, consider that. And it, 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 it has an interesting name. It's called Ogilvy's syndrome. Ogilvy's syndrome. That is when you have hypokalemia together with this pseudo colon obstruction because it's not really an obstruction we are talking about here here we have muscle weakness and then when you have these two together hypokalemia and, or, and this obstruction bowel obstruction then you will have Ogilvy's syndrome and usually it is secondary to diarrhea why because when you have diarrhea you are flushing out too much potassium in the stool okay so that was muscle weakness. What about heart problems? Imagine now that we put electrodes on the patient. So we have an ECG made and we will have some graphs on the ECG and we can see a P wave, a QRS wave, a T wave. Okay. And then what we will see in hypokalemia is that the ST is decreased. The T wave is also decreased. We have an extra U wave in the end of the T wave. And we have a QT prolongation, which means that the distance between Q and T wave is increased. And when the QT is increasing too much, you can get something to, called torsades de pointes, which can lead to death. Because torsades de pointes looks something like this and is very dangerous. You can, it can lead to death. When we have hypomagnesium, which means a low level of magnesium, Together with low level of potassium, so hypokalemia, so we have hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia together. This is more dangerous to get acute prolongation, even more. And usually what we see is that when we have hypomagnesemia, that can itself cause hypokalemia. So remember that too, when you have a low level of magnesium, that can cause hypokalemia. Kalemia. So maybe that is the cause of the hypokalemia. Then please add magnesium and, and, and maybe the potassium will change. So you need to always find the cause and you need to treat the cause of the disease. Okay, and when this, these were only some of the electrical things that we can see because we can see also AV block. These are very specific arrhythmias. AV block, we can see atrial, fibril uh, atrial uh, premature beats, uh, ventricular 
premature beats. We can see ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. We can see also paroxysmal atrial uh, tachycardias or junctional problems. So there are very, very uh, many, many types of ECG changes that you can see. Uh, I don't want to list all of them, but the most important I want you to to, to recognize is ST is decreased, T is decreased, we have an extra U wave or we have a QT prolongation. The most important is QT prolongation. Please remember that because there are also medications that can increase this further. So if you have a patient who's taking antibiotics, for example, fluoroquinolone or macrolide, these two medications are also increased in the QT prolongation. And if you take these two medications together with the uh, hypokalemia in this uh, patient, then we are having a serious, serious problem. And especially if the patient also have hypomagnesemia, as we said. So what about other heart problems? So for example, when we have coronary ischemia, that, is mean, that means that the, the blood vessel is not delivering so much bl uh, the, the proper amount of blood to the heart, then we get ischemia. Uh, that can cause a stress and that can cause an epinephrine release and if, you, if, if the epinephrine can now act on cells and move potassium into the cells because the usual place the most the usual place for potassium is in cells we have two spaces here what we're talking about in the cell or outside the cell when we're talking outside the cell that's extracellular when we're talking about cellular that's cellular okay so when the potassium is usually in the cells but epinephrine, but but this potassium is also outside. So there there are potassium in both spaces, but they are more concentrated in the cell. What happens now? Epinephrine comes in and will move almost all potassium into the cell. What happens? You get a severe hypokalemia. Why? Why? Because emia that's in the blood. It stands. You hear it in the name. Hypokalemia. You have a low level of potassium in the blood. In the, in the cells, we have a high number of potassium here, but we, we, we cannot measure that directly by taking a blood sample because when we take a blood sample, we see the potassium outside of cells because these, these are in the blood vessels, in the blood. And therefore we get a severe hypokalemia. So that was heart. And we, we need to uh, talk about renal problems, so kidney problems, that's the third thing. What can we see? We will see an increase of three things here. B-carbonate will be increased and ammonia will be increased and blood pressure will be increased. Blood, uh, blood pressure is something you can measure, of course. Ammonia is what can be seen in the lab and also B-carbonate can be seen in the lab. So these two things in the lab and the other blood pressures is measured um, uh, by the physical examination. And the other thing that we will see is that the concentrating ability of the kidneys will be decreased. That will be lower. And also the sodium level will be lower. And then you get something called hypo natremia. So two things will be lower here, sodium and the concentrating ability of the kidney. So that was kidney. And now let's add another thing here into the mix. We have, if we have a patient who is getting diuretics, these are medications that are flushing out water from your kidneys, from your body. Diuretics, especially TSI diuretics, if they are given in high dose, which means 50 milligram and above, then they can cause that we have diabetes. They can also cause that we have hypomagnesemia, that is a low, low level of magnesium. And they can also cause that you get a double risk of these heart arrhythmias that we talked about. So three things that is important here is that if you get a lower magnesium level, hypomagnesemia, and we said that hypomagnesemia can cause hypokalemia, then we see the correlation here. We said that arrhythmias can be increased. So if you take tiazide diuretics and this patient has low amount of potas uh, potassium, so hypokalemia, then it's very dangerous because it's a double fold risk of getting these arrhythmias. And as we said, if you get arrhythmias like torsades, the point is you can die. So please, it's a, it's a warning signal. 
and diabetes can also co be caused because the TSI diuretic can cause a decreased insulin secretion and thereby it can cause a TSI associated uh, diabetes. Okay, so to conclude, which are the most important things that we need to remember? Muscle weakness, both skeletal muscles and respiratory muscles and gastrointestinal muscles. And also we need to remember that uh, this low level of potassium, uh, usually potassium can cause a vasodilation in the blood, which means that the blood, blood uh, art, the arteries are getting larger and the blood flow to the muscle gets, gets better. Okay? But if we have a low amount of potassium, then we don't have so much vasodilation, which means that we don't have so much good blood flow to the muscles, which means that the mu muscle will die. And then we call it ischemic rhabdomyolysis and that means that the muscle cell died and as we said we have potassium the highest concentration of potassium is in cells for example muscle cells and that means if the high concentration of muscle cells then uh, is destroyed and released into the bloodstream then it will increase the uh, level of the potassium in the blood and that can mask the low level of potassium that we had previously. So we had a low level, but we killed the muscle cells. And in the muscle cells, we had this potassium that was released into the uh, bloodstream now. And then when we measure the um, blood and we see it in the lab that, oh, this seems normal. Yes, because we have a rhabdomyolysis here. And usually what we can see also uh, when we have rhabdomyolysis, we have myoglobi myoglobinuria myoglobin they are proteins in the muscle and when they are released into the bloodstream and into the kidneys they will cause the, that we have high amount of these proteins myoglobins in the urine so what we can see then is that we have high amount of myoglobin and then we have this marabdomyolysis which increased the potassium level in the blood but in fact we have a very low level of potassium in these patients so and the renal problems that we talked about was increased uh, bicarbonate increased ammonia increased blood pressure then we had decreased sodium so hyponatremia and a decreased concentrating ability of the kidneys so that's it thank you very much for listening